Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home studio which is just outside of Toronto in Canada and very close to the lake. It has been only a couple of weeks since I podcasted last but I am so excited. I just have so much knitting and sewing on the brain and I cannot wait to share that with you today. If you are looking for me elsewhere, you can find me on Instagram as Sandy by the Lakeside. I try to share a lot of photos there. I love Instagram. I am on Ravelry as Sandy Ran, and I also have a podcast group there, which I'm not there constantly or too regularly, but I do check in. So please say hello and introduce yourself in the By the Lakeside group. And if you have any questions about this podcast or any other one, feel free to ask me there. Um, I don't do show notes. I've had a couple of people ask me recently, but it's really difficult for me. I, I don't have a lot of time and it just takes uh, so much more time to put together show notes when you're doing a podcast and working and have a family. So I hope you understand and I do try to put everything on the screen, but if I do miss something, um, please go ahead and, and ask me either in the comments below or in the group on Ravelry and I will definitely get back to you when I see that. So it is Friday, May 24th. Spring is finally here, I think. Things are starting to grow, um, starting to do a little bit of gardening and just so happy that School is almost over. It's been um, really busy as it usually is at the end of the school year. So much going on. Um, soccer is getting uh, busier and busier. So it's just been nice, but busy, and I am really excited about my knitting. So I am gonna, going to jump into that in a moment. I have a few things that I wanna talk about today. Super excited about them. First one is something I forgot to mention in my last podcast. Um, totally forgot about it, so I will share that with you today. When I was at Vogue Knitting Live in New York in January, I had the pleasure of being interviewed by Christy Glass from Christy Glass Knits. I'm sure you guys all know who she is. And I'm going to put a link to the inter interview below. And if you are interested in learning a little bit more about me um, and seeing, watching the interview, I had a lot of fun with Christy, so I'm gonna put that link below. And if you haven't seen it, you can go check that out. I have a big giveaway that I am super stoked about today. Um, it is the 10,000 subscriber giveaway, and I met that number on both Instagram and YouTube in the same week or two, so I've been thinking about this for a while and have a few really fun things that I am going to talk about at the end and give you details on how to enter for that giveaway. Last thing that I want to talk about um, in my announcements is I have something super, super exciting to share with you guys and um, it has to do with Rhinebeck. I know that last year it was a very last minute decision for me but I have planned my trip to Rhinebeck and this year I'm going with my husband and my kids I think unless something comes up and they can't make it. But the reason I am planning this so far in advance is because I am so excited to let you guys know that I am going to be a vendor at Needles Up Rhinebeck. I am thrilled to be working with the ladies from Legacy Fiber Arts and joining the wonderful group of people that they work with. Um, I think this year, Amy Beth from Fat Squirrel would not be able to make it to Rhinebeck, so they asked me and I could not be happier. I am so excited. I hope that if you are going to Rhinebeck, you will be at Needles Up. I will share lots more about that and the details in the coming episodes because it is a little bit early, but exciting news over here. So thank you so much, Sue and Chelsea, for thinking of me and including me. I am just over the moon excited. I cannot wait. So I think that covers all of my exciting announcements and I'm gonna jump into the knitting because I hope this isn't too chattery and too long today. But I kind of had a moment in the last week or two. I've been doing a lot of, um, what should I call it? Hmm. 
I guess just kind of evaluating how I'm spending my time, um, what I'm focusing on, and a lot of the things today have to do with that. I have a couple of books I'm going to share at the end that kind of contributed to um, just rethinking how I'm spending my time, what's going on around me, because we're all busy. I've talked about this a lot. It's kind of getting boring, but I really, um, I'm just trying to find ways to center myself, make sure that I am getting all the things that need to be done or get done, um, but then also saving time for me to make sure that I'm the best that I can be, the best mom, um, I'm being productive in my shop, and I'm not constantly feeling tired or disappointed that I didn't get to this and I didn't get to that because, you know, we all have X amount of hours, it's all the same for all of us in the day, but it's how you use them and it's what you are focusing on. And I found some really interesting stuff that I'm gonna share later. But because of all of this, I had um, a week or two after the Knitter's Frolic where I was super busy and recuperating from that and I had a shop update and cleaning up and all that, I just spent a lot of time thinking about what the next few months of crafting looked like for me and I realized I didn't do a make nine in January, like a lot of people do. Um, and that was okay. I remember thinking about it and thinking I have so many whips that I love and adore, and I don't need to pile up a whole bunch of, you know, projects that are just gonna stress me out. But in the last couple of weeks, I have been thinking about projects that are more meaningful to me, that I either want in my wardrobe or just um, I'm really excited to make. So I did do a make nine. I posted that on Instagram and I am in love with it. I actually included three of the projects that have already been started. So they do include some whips and the rest are things that even if I don't get them done in 2019, I'm okay with that. Um, but they are my future make nine items. If they change, they change. But for right now, I feel pretty good about them. So I am just going to start with I know I've spoken a lot about the three projects on the go and I've had a few people um, talk to me about it and really resonate with that and I just wanted to mention that I know a lot of people already do that kind of thing where you focus on like one sweater, um, one shawl or kind of mid-sized project and then have an on-the-go project like a, a hat, pair of socks, something like that. And lots of people already do that, but I did get that idea um, or was inspired by that idea from Trisha. And she is from the um, the wonderful podcast. Um, I'm just trying to remember the name because it just escaped my mind. Um, best Day Ever, I believe it is. The Best Day Ever podcast. I'm going to put it on the screen in case I messed that up. But I love Trisha. She's just one of those people that I could sit and watch any day, no matter what I'm doing, no matter what I'm into. She's very calming. Um, she's just a beautiful person on the inside and out. And she totally inspired me because she does large projects, small projects. She doesn't seem to have much guilt about putting one down and picking another one up. But I liked the structure of having these three projects. So that has become a main, um, a main goal of mine to really center myself on those three. I still have lots in the background and now I have built up, I'm gonna show it to you, this huge, I might even have to stand up, this huge basket that I found last week. It is ginormous, but I wanted to really put aside the yarn for these Make Nine projects. Um, all in one spot because I find when I have a sweater, a sweater quantities yarn, I tuck it away on a shelf or it goes into another basket or a bag and I kind of forget about it. And then a new pattern comes along and I am distracted and I just start things when I, you know, it hits me and then I realize, I don't know if I really wanted this sweater right now. Is it the right time of year? Do I want it in my wardrobe right now? So this back basket is another way of helping me to get organized. And I think I actually have yarn for all of the projects on my Make Nine. I've purchased quite a bit recently because of this, but I'm really gonna try to look at it when I'm thinking of starting a new project and just remind myself that 
this is what's important to me. And I'm just gonna share what's in my basket. So, like I said, the photo is on Instagram. I chose three sweaters, three shawls, I believe. Two of them I've already started, so that is fantastic. And three smaller projects. I did not include the one whip that I have going right now that is taking up all of my time. So I'm gonna share my whip with you first. It is the Soldatna Crop, which I know everyone is knitting right now. And I love it. It's beautiful and it's been fun to knit. I am slightly concerned that it's a little bit small, but I think that when I block it, I can um, do a little bit of work on that. But I'm so happy with my colors. This is the pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Networks. I shared my yarns with you last time. I have them in this beautiful bowl that I picked up at Target when I went to Buffalo a few weeks ago. So all of my yarn is in there and it is by, um, it's Chelsea Lux yarn from Chelsea Lux in New Jersey. And the colors are, this is all DK. Colors are Sunflower, Pink Peony, which is also in the body here, and it's so beautiful. Might be blowing out a little bit, but it's just so pretty. Um, and then the darker green is Eucalyptus. And the lighter one, I think is called Mini Mobius. They're beautiful. And I actually like the fact that once I started knitting with these, um, the lines are a little bit blurred in edges because they're a little bit close together in color. And I actually really like that. I think it's beautiful. I'm probably at the point where in the pattern they say that you can start the bottom um, color work and ribbing. It's a little bit short for me, so I think I'm going to just add a couple more repeats of this and then do the ribbing because it's a little bit too cropped for me. I do like it cropped, but I have been having so much fun knitting on this. I've really been working on it every day, mostly, and I love it. It's so pretty. So that is the one whip that I am working on before I move on to my Make 9, but now I'm gonna get into all of the projects in my huge Make 9 basket. And I think I will start with the three sweaters. So I have patterns for them printed out in my plastic sleeves and all the yarn in this basket ready to go. First one is the Ingalls sweater also by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks. And I did share this I think last week because I had already purchased the yarn. And it is this beautiful yarn from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And then the color work will be in this gorgeous kind of burgundy wine henna color weight from Primrose. So that is going to be my Ingalls sweater. Now since then, I've purchased two more sweater quantities worth of yarn because I really wanna knit The Weekender. And that's by Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits. I'm sure you guys have all seen that sweater too. And for that, I picked up Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Snowbound color, which I think would be perfect in my wardrobe. Um, I did want sort of a more neutral color that would go with jeans and go with anything. Um, and this is uh, the worsted weight yarn. So that, I, I just don't know which one I'm gonna cast on first. That's my next thing, but I'm actually waiting until I finish my Soldatna and just see what I feel like. So that's for the Weekender. The third sweater is one that I've had in my Ravelry queue for years and years, and I purchased yarn for it at my first trip to Rhinebeck, but I ended up using that for another one. And I just can't get this one out of my head. It is called the Toulouse Pullover by Leah B. Tibolt. I love the styling of this. It kind of looks like, um, almost like a sweatshirt. It's a little bit slouchy, oversized, and it's got this beautiful tie at the front neck. And for that, also got a neutral, and I ordered 
from Espace Tricot. I was very curious about this yarn. So it is the Gilliat. I don't know how to say this. I'm going to try it. It's De Rerum Natura. It's from France, and I think it's a recent yarn that they have stocked in their shop. And I was just browsing through their website, which is amazing, and decided to try it out, and I'm very happy. It's super soft. Um, and this color, let's see what it is. I think it's pepper and salt, but in French, poivre et sel. You can see it there. So I'm really excited about this one. It's a little bit more taupe than the Brooklyn Tweed, you can see. And I, I just think these would be perfect pieces in my wardrobe. And I think that's what I'm going for with the sweaters. The Soldatna is super cute and fun to knit. Um, I don't know if it will be one that I reach for often. So I really wanted to focus on some sweaters that would be a part of my wardrobe for next fall. And I think I'm so excited about them because in spring and summer, I actually seem to have more time to knit. I don't know if it's more sunlight, um, a little bit more time outside, and I need more time to sew sweaters. So I'm already thinking about what I want in my fall wardrobe. So those are the three. I cannot wait to pick out which one will be next, so stay tuned for that. I'm pretty sure by um, this weekend, I will have the Soldatna close to finished or finished. And then I will be picking um, my next sweater to work on. So for the three smaller projects or shawls, um, actually, no, I'm going to start with shawls. Two of them I've already got on the needles and I'm still really excited about them. I'm not going to talk about them for too long because I think I did last week or last podcast and multiple times before. Um, the next one I will be working on is this beautiful Bayou shawl, which I love, in the Quince & Co. Um, linen. So this is definitely a summer project for me. I'd really like to have that one done soon. So that is my first shawl priority. Second one is A Girl's Best Friend, which I also love, it's beautiful but I realize I don't know if I really love knitting this shape shawl. This triangular shawl, which grows and grows, and at the end you are just at this huge, long row kind of stage, and although I love the look of them, I don't know if I love that. I think I like knitting the shawl across, um, like the Bayou shawl where you start small, you get larger and then you get smaller. And a new shawl that I've purchased yarn for and I cannot wait, I've been wanting to knit this one also for years, um, is the Vertices Unite by Stephen West. And I totally splurged. Got the most beautiful yarn for this. But I'm gonna be good and I'm gonna let it sit in this beautiful basket until I finished at least the Bayou shawl. I am not sure if I will do a girl's best friend before this one because wait till you see it. So I ordered yarn from La Bien Amie. It was a kit for the Vertices Unite. And this is it. I just think it is the most beautiful set of colors I've ever seen. It smells amazing. I will tell you what colors they are. They are all in um, singles, merino singles. Um, this color is High Garden. This is Dawn. This is Curious Handmade. Parchment. And Loam. Oh my gosh, you guys. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. So I ordered that. It came actually very quickly. I did have to pay duties, taxes, all that yucky stuff. But this was a total treat and it was kind of my little reward to myself after the frolic. 
I had actually gone looking at the Frolic for um, a kit of five skeins. And by the time I got to shop that day, there wasn't really much left. So that is my third shawl, which I am super excited about. And I think that will be a fun pattern to knit because you knit it, um, I actually haven't printed that one, but you knit that one kind of in pieces and it's a little interesting. So that's my third shawl. Then, let's see here, for my three smaller projects. The first one um, I had already cast on when I was in Cape Cod last fall, and I decided to quickly whip up a little project bag for it. I was just in the mood to sew, and it is the Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry, which you've probably all seen before as well. And I have this beautiful spin cycle yarn I love the colors. I've shown this to you guys before, but I found it in my basket of whips and I thought this would be perfect this fall. So I've pulled it out again. Let's see, there's the front. Just have this itty bitty start to it, but this is definitely one that I don't want to forget about and I would love to be wearing maybe at Rhinebeck if possible. So that is in my three smaller project section. I also have been dying to make the Kobo Cat. So that is on my list. Oops, I think I just lost a label. And I have yarn for that as well. This is the beautiful Legacy Fiber Arts DK Weight in Tuxedo and the Mohair in Raspberry Sorbet. And I know that Sue was knitting a hat with this combination and I fell in love with it. So that is what this is going to be. Also, probably perfect for fall in the beginning of winter. So I actually have a gorgeous pom-pom for this too. So this is gonna be a fun, smaller project. And then the last one I've also had in my queue for years. So I feel like I just kind of went through some older projects and thought I need to stop getting distracted and knit the things that I truly love and I still love because if I still love them, that means something and that's what I should be spending my time on. So this is a another cowl pattern um, and I love cowls. Um, I love wearing them. I think they're perfect for me and the Canadian climate because sometimes I just don't wanna wear a big huge scarf. I'm in and out of the car um, or in and out of schools and uh, stores. So cowls for me are amazing. And this one is by Carrie Bostic Hogue, and it's called the, I think it's called the Dessau, Dessau Cowl. So it's primarily in this color, and then there are triangles in, that will be in this contrast color. And I've got this gorgeous, nice and knit yarn that I got at Vogue Knitting Live. The darker turquoise is called High Tide, and this one is called Reed and I think they're beautiful together. They are worsted. It's so, so pretty. And I think totally um, will fit into my wardrobe nicely too. So with all of this planning and um, dream knitting and working on my soldatna a lot, I was experiencing a lot of hand pain again or hand fatigue and wrist fatigue and um, I realized that I am starting to knit a little bit faster the more regular I knit and my wooden needles may have been slowing me down. So I decided to um, switch over to metal needles and I've really enjoyed my Chaigu needles that I've used so far. So I got a set of those to hopefully help um, with some of that hand pain. I don't know, my right hand ends up being so stiff and a little bit achy that I have to kind of stop. So I'm really excited. I have just, I feel like my love for knitting without stress has come back where I'm not thinking how quickly should I be getting this done and comparing myself to how quickly others get done. I mean, I would love to knit faster, but I can only knit as fast as I can knit. And the more that I knit, the faster I will get. So. I have lots of summer plans for that. Now aside from those, I do have my sock that I showed last time 
and I won't show it to you again because it's just a basic vanilla sock, but I did find, you know, there are other projects in my studio here that I don't want to forget about. Um, so they're still in bags and they're still on the table, but I'm just kind of focusing on these, but I found one that I didn't want to put away. And I think I might actually, because it's kind of a small one, might consider this like a sock project or an on the go project. And it might go in my summer bag for soccer and just mindless knitting. It is the Tiny Tassels from Loop, Loop London. I've got it in this fun summery bag, which of course makes it more fun. And I mean, I, I cast this on on Halloween. It's tiny, but it's such an easy knit. And I would love to have this for Rhinebeck because now that I have my trip booked, I am thinking of all the things that I could be wearing. And for this, I am using the Legacy Fiber Arts in the Steel Toes Fingering Base in this gorgeous color, which is Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's so much fun. And I have this great mini that came with it for a sock set. And this will definitely be um, some of the tassels. I need to find a couple more colors, but this is just gonna be a fun, fun project. You know, I haven't forgot about my nice knit poncho, the Kate's poncho, that's in my bedroom. And I also have the three color cashmere cowl, but we'll see, we'll see how things go. This basket and the projects I've shown you today are really what I'm focusing on this summer and it might all change, who knows? So that I think is all of my knitting. Yes, I have a couple of fun things to um, also share. I got a beautiful Mother's Day gift. I mean, I helped my husband pick it, of course, and Maria was great and helped. She's from the Knitting Loft. Um, I got this beautiful yarn holder from the Knitting Loft for Mother's Day from Glenn and the boys, and it's just so beautiful. It is from Moose Hill Woodworks. There's the tag. It's the Maple Hickory Curly Aspen, I believe. It's made in Canada. They do have a website, but you can um, find these at the Knitting Loft in Toronto. And it's so beautiful, I love it. I, I even like how this comes off. And it's really, really pretty. So that is a beautiful gift that I received. Um, I've been purchasing fabrics and really excited about uh, my next shop updates. And with some of the fabric that I purchased, I picked up this beautiful Rayful Paper Company pin. It's kind of showing very well. It's a beautiful butterfly. Let's see. Okay. I ordered this beautiful mini basket and some minis from a homespun house. I'm not sure if you have seen Molly's posts on Instagram, but she recently started carrying these beautiful woven baskets, all different sizes. And I have a large one that I purchased at Rhinebeck one year and I absolutely adore it. Actually, it's right here. This one I got in Rhinebeck. And I am a huge basket person. I have them all over the house. I have them by my bedside table in my bedroom, in like the front living room, sort of a catch-all. That large one is by my fireplace in the family room. And I really regretted not getting a small one when I saw them at Rhinebeck. And so when Molly started carrying them, I was so excited. It's just the perfect size to bring out on the back patio or move around from room to room in the house. And I think this is just gonna be my little catch-all sock or uh, tiny tassels basket for the summer. I also picked up these beautiful minis in really pretty colors. And I thought this would be fun for Maybe some scrappy socks. I'm not too sure yet what I want to do with them. I have given up on my cozy memories blanket because I just don't love it. And 
I'm not sure if maybe I'll get back to it one day or if maybe I'll just restart with beautiful yarns. I'm not sure. In my package from the lovely Molly, she sent me some gorgeous yarn as a gift and I am so appreciative of it. Molly, you are such a talented dyer and everything you sent was so beautiful and so similar to what I would have picked from your shop. I just love that. So she sent me all of these yarns. Oh my gosh, well, I'll show them to you all. It's beautiful yarns. And I thought these three together would just make the most gorgeous shawl of some kind. So maybe one day they will all be paired beautifully together. They, all of these yarns are on her cashmere merino fingering base. This one is rose gold. This one is Be Quiet and Drive. And also, can I just say, Molly, I love the names that you give your yarns. Like, that is so important to me. And I, they're perfect. They're just perfect. This one is Ash. And then this other one, also on the same base, didn't have a color name, but it's also beautiful. So thank you so much, Molly. I was so surprised by the extras that you threw in. There was a charm and it was just such a wonderful surprise. So thank you so much. Um, in the last few weeks, I also had the wonderful opportunity to head down to Buffalo to do some shopping with my friend Eric from the Sticks Plus Twine podcast. And we met up with the lovely and so sweet and wonderful Shauna from Adelaide Cottage who lives in the Buffalo area. And we had been trying to meet up for quite some time and weather didn't allow it at one point and busy schedules and things like that. But we had a great meetup. We had lunch with her and she gave me some gorgeous yarn that I have to share. Look at this. So beautiful. This would also make a great Kobuk hat or maybe another hat. I'm not sure. Might want to make another um, road tripping hat with this. This would be really pretty. This is her Marion DK yarn in the colorway Not Today. And oops, I'm stuck. This is her Breezy Mohair, also in the same colorway Not Today. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely love this. Again, I could not, like she couldn't have chosen something closer to what I would have chosen. So thank you so much, Shauna. I hope we can meet up again and um, spend some time together again. Which so, is so nice when you meet people online that you, you know, Shauna and I have a few things in common and we kind of connected at a certain point. And it was just so nice to meet in person and have kind of like a calmer, more quiet time to really get to know someone. Um, it's such a nice thing. So if you ever have the opportunity to meet people in real life that you have met online through this amazing community, I strongly encourage it. Um, if you're traveling or if you happen to be at a festival, you should definitely connect. It's such an amazing thing. So thank you so much, Shauna. She was also awesome and gave me a beautiful mug and a cookbook and a little journal. And I was just so touched. She's just an amazing person. She's everything that you um, would think she would be in person. She's exactly like she is online. So I had a really great month. I purchased a lot of yarn. I received some great things in the mail and as gifts. And um, it's my time to give back and share something with you guys. So I have been wanting to do a big giveaway for the 10,000 subscriber um, milestone that I met recently. And so I've been collecting a few things. I'm not quite finished, but I wanted to share with you and open up a thread in my group on Ravelry where you can enter to win a prize. So, so far I have this little basket where I'm collecting things. I have a By the Lakeside bag that I'm going to include in the package. I grabbed this off of my shelf because I really wanted to have a yarn to give away that was meaningful from a Canadian person. So this is 
the Fleece Artist National Parks Collection, and it is the Ontario or Thousand Islands Ontario colorway. And I thought, how awesome would that be to send to someone um, as part of this giveaway? I've been thinking a lot more about Canadian makers and yarn dyers, and I thought this would be a great way to start. And I think this color is just beautiful. So that will be in the package. I will be including some little bits and pieces from my shop. I've got leather scissor covers and a pin, um, the rose gold scissors and measuring tape, and okay, the best of all. I mentioned it in my last podcast. It is this beautiful necklace, which I don't want to open, from Bed of Roses. It is very, very similar to this one. It's the same color cord and a lot of the same um, colors and charms that I have on my necklace. So these are all beautiful progress keepers and stitch markers that are on this leather cord. So easy, um, so stylish to wear, and then so functional to just pull something off for your knitting. And um, I'm really excited to share this. This was a beautiful gift from Catherine, and I'm happy to include it in this prize for one of you. I also have a coupon code for her shop, which I didn't share last time because I didn't have the card with me and I totally forgot. So um, if you are interested in purchasing a necklace from Catherine's shop, I strongly suggest doing so. Her customer service is amazing and her product is absolutely gorgeous. I've been wearing this quite often um, and I have one on a black cord too that I've been wearing depending on my outfit. And so the coupon code for you guys is tea time. I will put it on the screen too so it's very clear and it will give you 10% off your next order. And I'm not quite done. I am actually going to include one of my favorite patterns from one of my favorite people, which is Tracy Miller from The Grocery Girls, or Tracy, I, I never know if I should say Millar or Miller, but Tracy has been designing the most beautiful patterns for socks um, that are, I think, that step above a vanilla sock, but they're very easy. Her pattern writing is so beautiful. So I'm gonna pick one of my favorite ones from her library and send that to you as well, whoever wins. And I think I'm gonna make this giveaway super simple and I'm gonna open up a thread on Ravelry in the By the Lakeside group tab, if you go there. Um, and basically I'll open up the, the thread for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. You click on that and just put in a comment. You can just say hi, you can share a favorite thing if you want, you don't have to, but um, just go visit there, say hello, and that is how I will pick a random winner for this giveaway and I will announce it on my next podcast. I'm not sure when that will be, but it will probably be a few weeks, so it will give you lots of time to enter. And I will mention it on Instagram too, so that if anyone misses this podcast, you can, um, you won't miss out. So I think that covers the giveaway, all my knitting. Um, I do have some shop news. I think I'm going to be having a shop update in the next couple of weeks. I do have a lot going on next week. My youngest is having his confirmation and we're wrapping up the school year so it might be two to three weeks from now but i will announce that information on instagram and i have also started da, 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 a newsletter on my website totally new to this it took me forever to get to it i was procrastinating but if you are interested in hearing by the lakeside shop news or even once in a while i'm not going to do it too often but once in a while, um, what's going on around my studio, by the lake, that kind of thing this summer, then please sign up for my newsletter on bythelakeside.com. You will get shop update information there, so you will um, know before it goes live. And I always post that information on Instagram too. So if, you, um, if you've been waiting to get something, uh, there are a few things in my shop right now. All of the project bags are sold out, but I am working on some really fun summer prints, small project bags for my next update. I've shared some sneak peeks on Instagram 
and they're not done yet, but I've got these beautiful butterflies, which I think are so summer appropriate. And then this print, which I can't get enough of. There is something, I don't know, if you are a sewer or sewist, there is something about little mice and sewing. It might be from Cinderella, I don't know, but this print is just everything summery and I don't know, it just reminds me of my childhood actually. And the next one on my cutting table today are these beautiful elephants. They are um, like origami elephants. I'm loving these prints. So I am um, focusing on small project bags for that next update. I have a few little pouches that I will be um, finishing up and putting in the shop as well. There are tote bags right now, lots of leather, and I think I will just put the small project bags in for now and then work on some larger ones for the next update. So, favorite things. I feel like I've been talking forever. I hope this isn't going to be too long. So, as I said in the beginning, I have been really focusing on being more mindful of how I'm spending my time um, and just making sure that my days are filled with what's important to me. And it kind of started after being um, like that long winter, just all of us didn't have a lot of energy and I was feeling tired a lot. And I discovered this book. And so I've started reading it and it's been really reminding me um, and I guess almost comforting me as to why some of these feelings are in so many of my days. And it is called Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. It is wonderful. And it basically, in a nutshell, it really talks about um, some of the possible links between technology, social media, um, just the way our world <laughs> kind of revolves around all of that stuff now. Um, and those are all good things. Technology is wonderful, but the rapid increase of it in the last 20 years or 30 years, 40 years, whatever, um, could be linked to how much more anxiety there is in our society. And so I am not anti-technology. I love my technology. I love how things are so easily accessible, but you do have to kind of think about how that's affected our lives and how maybe we're living you know, on this like really rapid life cycle of everything that it's exhausting. So this book has been wonderful to sort of ground me again, remind me that maybe it's not just me running around like crazy, maybe it's everything around me. And you know, that's actually an easy thing to fix. And once you know you and you're mindful of it, you can kind of control what is coming in and out of you every day. So that's been wonderful. And then that sort of triggered me to pull out a book that I pull, that I had in my drawer and kind of set aside. Um, this is a beautiful book. I have not read very much of it, but I'm really enjoying it. It is called First We Make the Beast Beautiful by Sarah Wilson. And um, it's called A New Journey Through Anxiety. It's basically about how um, in some cultures addressing the beast is actually what allows you to conquer it. So I really like this. I um, I don't think of myself as someone with a lot of anxiety. Obviously I have stress like everyone and I have moments of anxiety, but I take care of people that have a lot of anxiety in their lives. And so a lot of times it seeps into my days and this is really helping me with that. I've had tons of school meetings, team meetings, um, doctor's appointments and stuff for um, someone who I care about very much in my life and I don't wanna to share too much about that because um, I wanna honor his privacy. But you know, when you're a mom and people around you that you love have stuff, you take on a lot of that stuff. And so these two books are really helping me to, um, to remember some of the important things I cannot forget. So those have been wonderful. I would highly recommend both of them if those topics interest you at all. And I think the last thing I wanna share is a new to me podcast. 
and my friend Meg from Wool and Cookies suggested it and I know I had clicked on their podcast before and I, I didn't really have the chance to get into it. I think it was the middle of winter and um, I was so busy preparing for the frolic that I didn't, um, I didn't really get into it. And that happens for me sometimes, so I saved it. And once I revisited them in the last week or two, I was like, oh my gosh, it is the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. And they are amazing. Um, Jackie and Caitlin are wonderful ladies, so inspiring. I love their friendship and the projects that they make and their focus. It's really, really inspiring. So they have also inspired me to um, stick to the projects that are meaningful to me. Um, and it's funny because I, I was clicking on, I'm starting to follow it, all of them on Instagram and I realized we've chatted before and I don't know where I was to have missed, sometimes that happens, sometimes you just miss people online, but I'm so happy that I found their podcast. I think if, um, if you're really into knitting, you will love their podcast. They are wonderful ladies, so I would encourage you to check that out and catch up on all of their episodes. Like I binged on them for two or three days. I also binged on the amazing Netflix show, Dead to Me. Oh my gosh, I loved it. I loved it, loved it. So if you're looking for something to watch, that's a good one. And I think that is it. I hope I haven't taken up too much of your day and that maybe you are inspired to get some lists made and some knitting baskets started. And thank you so much for watching. Please head over to Ravelry to enter the giveaway. Um, I'm still gonna pile a few more little goodies into that basket and I'm really excited to send something out to one of you. Thank you so much if you have been with me from the beginning of this podcast when I thought no one would even watch or if you've just recently joined. I really appreciate all of you and thank you so much for joining me. I really love this community and I want to give something back to one of you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.